Hello, it's me again. We're going to go over how to tackle this evolutionary variation on the cube theme. We've done crazies, we've done supers, but we've never done something that made us have to go back to square one in terms of our planning. But what I'm going to show you is you don't have to do that. In the solving of this cube, the three major things that I'm going to show you is, first off, number one, we don't have to do any new notations. I've seen the dashes and the minuses and the pluses. I'm going to do it in a way where you don't have to know any of that. Second thing is we're going to use the same strategies that we've used with the Rubik's Cubes, just a little bit skewed. And the third and most important is no monstrously long algorithms to get out of parity situations. I, I, I'm going to go through a way of doing it without any issues with that. So, Shazam! Oh, the magic didn't work. Well, probably because I think it's important to show you how this thing scrambles. You're probably very aware of this, but you can see that because of the unique way, it only is going to turn in one direction. I'm going to call that just R, and the reason is because I'm always going to have it oriented with the small middle cube to my left. So I'm only going to be moving from the right. And even though it's the one only one way to move, I'm just going to call that R. And I can't do just an R move because it won't turn. It's always going to be an R2. So whether I say R or R2, it's always the same. The use... Ignore the smartest comments in the back. Anyway, the uh, U's are going to be the same and the uh, D's are going to be the same. Anyway, so uh, so the other thing that to realize with this um, is that uh, although I'm going to call it the same, if I do an R, it's going to mix up my shape. So if I wanted to retain the cube shape, I have to do what I'm going to call priming the cube. I can prime it from the top or prime it from the bottom. What that means is I'm going to move it in a way, in this case just a half, uh, just a 30 degree turn from the up direction to where if I do a 2R, I maintain my cube form at the top and the bottom. Most of you probably all already know this. It skews my middle, but I'm not going to worry about that. So when I say prime the top, that's what I mean. Just move it over so I can maintain the cube on the top. When, uh, so in other words, it's, it's, it's a U move, just about 30 degrees. When I say prime the bottom, the same thing in the same direction. Also, uh, um, but this time it's counterclockwise. So this is what I mean by priming the bottom. All the rest is going to be the same. So uh, with that said, we'll proceed with the scrambled. I'm just going to kind of scramble some of it right in front of you just to show to those that have not seen this before, it scrambles in very unique and very interesting ways where you can do half turns, quarter turns, big turns, and it seems to hopelessly get it in shapes that are both unusual and potentially infuriating. So I don't think you need to see me do the whole thing, so I'm just gonna use the magic and scramble it the rest of the way. Shazam. Okay, ye gads, look at this monster. So, uh, obviously I can't move it in uh, any specific um, U and D directions like this, so I'm just gonna move it up here. So the first step, as you all probably know, is, uh, is we have to get it back to the cube form. So to do that, we need to have a very specific pattern on the top and the bottom. Um, first, I'm going to define what is top and what is bottom, because I told you that the small cube in the middle is going to be to my left. So by turning it here, I can see that, that this is the direction, so this is going to be top, this is going to be bottom. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for something that looks like a fish, which means I'm going to have all of my edge pieces, small edge pieces up here, with two large corner pieces forming the tail, and all and this being populated just by corner pieces. Now, I'm not going to go through any algorithms on how to do this. It's mostly intuitive, and it's not worth it unless you want a speed cube, which I don't. So the basic strategy that I'm going to do is, uh, is, is I'm going to try to put all these edge pieces together as much as I can. Anytime I see a V like that, I'm going to try to get out of it because there's not much that I can do with it. So when I see groups of two, I'm going to try to put it with everything else. So I'm just going to put this down here. I might as well break the V to do it. <clears throat> so I put that there, one, two, three, four, five. So there's five. Maybe I can fit another one in here. Here's these two. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six. So again, I'm just moving this around. I'm going to try to break the V confirmation. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe this way. Turn this. I do have something of a V here, but I won't worry about that yet. And it might be more brownie in motion than anything else that gets me through this, but uh, while moving these in place, that's going to work. 
move this back here. Maybe I can separate this out. So I'm just trying to load these in as much as possible, seeing how many I can put in one place. Put this across here. Now at any time, if I can get two of these with a uh, edge between corners, that's what I'm gonna actually go for. And just try to move this into place. Oops, still not what I want. Okay, I'm gonna take these out so I can make something of the fish's tail here. So move that down here. And see if I can maybe bring that out of the way. Move these two up, but move it up in such a way to meet these guys. Oh, opposite side here, so I'm just gonna move them around here and bring these two up. So I have these over here. I've got my fishtail. Now I can bring this around. Now I wish I can say that I had that planned out exactly like that, but I didn't. It's just a matter of finagling with it. And there it is. So there's my fish. And again, the um, overall strategy was to do just that. Um, just put as many of these together, try to avoid a V formation and try to get um, two edges and two corners together. And then we have the star over here. So now it's just a question of finding symmetry and staying within that symmetry. No need to memorize anything from here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over here so that I'm working on the tail of the fish. The tail of the fish is going to rotate into this star. Now at this point it doesn't matter how. And every move that I do I'm going to be making the same shape and dealing with the symmetry. So turn here. You all probably already know this. Um, there's this shape over here, four edges, four corners. I'm going to split it down here. This is the same shape, split at the same place. I end up with a butterfly and a butterfly. Now, I can't split these at the same place, so I just keep getting butterfly after butterfly. So I'm going to have to split it down this middle here and split it down this middle here. And upon doing that, I get this shape. A shape where you have two and two, two and two. And once I get it here, I'm very close to getting to my cube form, split it down the middle between the two edges and between the two edges, turn it, and there's my cube here, there's my cube here. You're going to notice that the middle sometimes isn't solved, that's okay, but I like to get the whole thing back in the cube form. It's just easy for me to deal with. To do that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a 2R, hold it like this, do a 2R, that'll put the middle back, but notice I've got this shield-like thing, skewed shield on the top and the bottom. Then I'm going to do a 2U, so I'm turning this around here so that I'm now splitting this in the front. 2R again. What that did is maintain the shape exactly as is, skewed my middle again. Then I'm going to turn to another 2U so that I have this nice symmetric shape, and then 2R. So not too unlike doing a, a middle swap. It's really the same kind of thing. Again, no new notation. The next step is to put all the corners of the same color in. Now I kind of got lucky in this confirmation, but normally what I would do, let's say I, I didn't get quite so lucky, I just skewed a little bit here. Um, normally what I, what I would want to do is put two of one color on one side and the other color on the other side, same thing here, and just move it in. So yellow and white. What I'm going to do is in order to get it back to the cube form, I'm going to prime it on the top. So I'm always going to keep it in the cube form. I shouldn't have said get it back, but keep it in the cube form. So I'm going to turn this to where uh, um, I'm going to turn this to where I'm going to have a orange one, rather a yellow one on, on on the top there. It's probably better if I turn it like this. So this way I'm going to try to put a yellow here and um, stick with white here, Oop, like so. And so I have two of one color, two of one color down here, two of one color, two of one color. So it's pretty intuitive, fairly simple. And then what I'm going to do is move this here, bring this across down here. So this is the basic shape that you're going to see as you're trying to move it and not lose your cube form. Put it in and then all is at the same side. Something I didn't mention that I probably should have is to see which is my top side, which is my bottom side. That's pretty simple. Just match it up to the middles. So you see this is orange and green, so that's matched up. So I know that this is the top side here. The top side is a side that allows me to use the middle in this configuration. 